I thought I'd come on today and just show you what you want to have in your foaling kit and the different things you're going to want to do to prepare for the birth of your foal. Hi, so we have not been getting a lot of sleep the last two weeks. We have been on baby watch with Stevie and <laughs> every time we go check, no baby. So we are now on our official due date for the baby to arrive and I am praying <laughs> that this baby comes tonight because I can't do this much longer i'm exhausted so here's your foaling kit checklist don't be caught unprepared number one you want to make sure you have a phone and emergency contact numbers for your vet and anyone who might be helping you in case of an emergency number two if you don't have a cell phone with you then make sure you've got a watch or a clock that you can track the progress through the different stages of labor number three Throw a pen and paper in there to make sure you can record the times that all the different markers are happening during and after foaling. This helps you track if they're getting to their different markers at the right timeline or if it's turning into an emergency and you need to call the vet. Number four, drinks, snacks, and blankets. It could be a long, cold, sleepless night in the barn if things go a bit sideways. Staying hydrated and energized helps you be the best you can be for your mare. Number five, if you don't have your cell phone, make sure to grab a camera so you can capture the moment. Number six, clean towels and paper towels. So this is so that you can dry your hands. Also, if you need to, wipe and dry the foal. However, you want to make sure that you're only doing that if absolutely necessary. It is actually a really important bonding process between mum and baby. If there's a sink in your barn, make sure you have soap on hand. Otherwise, grab some hand sanitizer or wipes. Number eight is latex and rectal gloves as well as lubricant. You're going to want this in case you need to assist with the delivery, plus an extra pair in order to handle the placenta. Number nine, garbage bags. You need this to store the expelled placenta until the vet has a chance to inspect it. They're looking for a nice healthy placenta and also to make sure it is fully intact and that there are not any small pieces that were left inside as this could become a very dangerous situation for your mare. The umbilical cord needs to be dipped with chlorhexidine and a water solution. So number 10, make sure you have a small cup on hand to be able to do this. Number 11, make sure you have chlorhexidine or similar disinfectant recommended by your vet, as well as clean water and measuring spoons so you can make sure you're mixing the correct proportions as per the vet's instructions. You want to make sure you're dipping the umbilical cord within the first hour of the baby being born, and then depending on which disinfectant you're using, you're going to do it a couple of times for the first few days. Number 12 is a flashlight. Make sure that you have this on hand because we want to avoid turning on lights and startling your mare. So this way you can check on her and her progress throughout the labor without bothering her. Number 13 is grab those chargers and an extension cord because you don't want batteries dying right when that baby is born. 14 is make sure you have clean scissors and then either a bucket or bowl with warm water in case you need to assist with the delivery. Number 15, and this is extremely important and one we actually forgot about, make sure you have a baby bottle and a plastic syringe. You do not need the needle part of it in case your mare does not nurse the baby. It is extremely important that baby is getting the colostrum within the first two hours of birth, so you may need to assist with this. And in the middle of the night, nothing is open <laughs> to go grab a baby bottle. Vet wrap or something to tie up the mare's tail so that it can stay nice and clean and out of the way during the delivery. Number 17 is an enema, and this is just something you can go grab at your local pharmacy. And this is for the foal, only to be used if they're unable to pass the meconium. Julia's on the phone with Briar. They're checking in on Stevie, Hey, okay. Briar is a good friend of ours, and she also knows Stevie from lessons. And I think she's our number one fan. Because of COVID lockdown, they have to resort to FaceTime 
playing. <laughs> so she often comes along with Julia to go do stalls over FaceTime. So there's going to be a few things you want to do to get the mare and stall prepared before foaling. Number one, during the last month of her pregnancy, you want to make sure you're separating your mare into a different paddock so that the other horses can't accidentally injure her. And also, if she has that foal early, we don't want other horses around. It's dangerous for everyone involved. It's a good idea to choose a spot where you're going to put mom and baby after baby is born because that way the mare can develop some important antibodies to pass on to the baby. Number two, if your mare is going to be foaling inside a stall, you want to make sure that you're putting her in this stall a few weeks before the foaling so that she can again build up antibodies that are specific to this area for the baby. And you're going to want to make sure that you are giving it a really good clean and then lining it with straw instead of shavings. This is healthier and safer for mom and baby. Shavings can get stuck in the baby's airway as well as mom's reproductive tract, which could cause infection. Number three is vaccinate and deworm. So have your vet come out a month before the due date to do the vaccinations and then right before foaling you want to deworm the mare so that she is not passing on anything to the baby. Four is handle her teats and udder. We learned this the hard way and we should have been doing this leading up to the birth so that in the event that we had a nursing issue, which we did, we would have been able to extract the milk a little easier to be able to feed it to the baby. Number five, when foaling is imminent, you're going to want to wrap her tail to keep it clean and out of the way. And also just with warm soapy water or warm water, wipe down the mare's vulva and inside of her legs, udder and the teats. And lastly, do your research. So this is talking to your vet, familiarize yourself with the different signs and stages of labor, go over any questions you might have with your vet and be prepared, come up with a plan for what happens in case of an emergency. This baby is finally coming and we were lucky enough to get it on film. So if you want to join us for the experience, make sure to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Barn Boots and Country Roots. Stevie! She's literally trying to wipe her nose on. <laughs> Your breath stinks. <laughs> Your breath does not smell the best. <laughs>